everyone for joining me today. My name is Nichelle Anderson and I'm the host for my podcast show, Surviving Your Journey to a Success. Thank you so much for um, tuning in for my fifth season here. And today the topic would be when to know a change is needed in your workplace. So we're going to dive into that, dealing with corporate America or organization that you're a part of or a team or any type of project where you're working with others and you're trying to not only get the job done, but take an analysis of what's going on so you can make it better, right? And by doing that, we can receive experience, mental peace. So a little bit about my podcast, if you're just now joining me started this about five years ago this fall (laughs) yay five years podcasting and the focus of my book corporate america surviving your journey to a success came about where i saw areas areas that i felt that if put in place working in the office can be a very motivating positive experience instead of the norm or i would say the norm the abnormal where it's very high stress you definitely don't get any mental peace there's a constant battle to have a balance of your personal life and your work life. You can be abused. That's it for management or even co-workers to management. It can be all of that. And so that's why I wrote the book. So fast forward, I started a podcast, like I said, a couple of years ago, and I named it this, Surviving Your Journey to a Success. So it deals with working in the workplace as well as your personal life and your relationships, because that can get very, you can have the greatest place to work (laughs) or what you're doing, you know, for a living, but then you could be in a relationship where it's very unhealthy or toxic, or you could be carrying on, you know, relationships or connections that no longer serve you. And it's hard to detach from that because it's on a personal level and it's more emotional energy that's required in that. Whereas a job, you can carry that stress over to where you, you know, return home or what have you. But eventually you can leave that place and then eventually it kind of fades out. But the personal relationship can stick to you like tar, (laughs) especially if those that don't want to leave or grow. Let's get into this. So before I start, I always like to say a prayer because I'm thankful and humbly to say that and to feel good about what I'm doing. My passion is to help and I do that through my writings. So in this day, I am thankful to the prime creator of all things that I give thanks for this blessing and opportunity that I will use it for the greater good. So welcome my survivors of the journey to my podcast that aims to inspire and motivate that you will continue to have joy, finesse, peace of mind, and for your sustained success. So let's go ahead and get into this where today we're looking at when to know a change is needed in your workplace and discuss why that's important to when a change is needed. You want to be able to to look at types of identifiers and look at how you can improve because most likely the morale is low. So you want to improve low morale. You want to reduce the high turnovers and you want to be able to have the employees if it's all possible, don't want to leave. They're willing to do overtime. They're willing to do all of that. If it comes to a point, and I guess I'm jumping ahead of myself, and they do not, not, they do not, none of this is, is on the table, meaning they have low morale, they have high turnovers, and overtime is offered, and they'd rather run away than to do it. So if opposite of that, which is people are more motivated employees, you have, it's like a, a long waiting list to, to get employed at your company. And overtime is like constantly people do it. Sometimes employees will do it. You don't really, you're not really looking for overtime or anything. I know it's kind of hard to believe, but um, when the employment of the place really nurture the employees and the change was implemented of what was blocking it. It could be, I know I talked earlier last month about work processes and so forth, how that can create stress and frustration, but it can be a number of things. Maybe it could be a vendor that is very abusive to the employees. And so therefore, instead of looking at just making that money, that connection with that vendor or that client, you're not really looking at your workforce that needs a change. I mean, something needs to be said. We don't want to, I know that the, the phrase is here in the United States, the customer is always right. And to an extent, I can agree to that. But another extent, if they're abusive, then they're not. <laughs> so that term of using the word always should be should be adjusted with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. So in my podcast, I like to start off with the main point. So that's important point number one. And then I like to give the wisdom point. Okay, so the important point of this for you to, to um, get an understanding of what I'm trying to uh, to provide in helping you is that when your metrics and industry trend says that you are outdated in your approach, both internally and externally. We have to remember this, that change is a good thing, but difficult to endure in any workplace, mainly due 
to acceptance required. So in my example, I talked about one could be a vendor or client and it's a part of your whole supply chain, but the interaction is very difficult. Perhaps their internal systems or processes doesn't really match up that makes your employees have to do a whole bunch of stuff. Instead of looking at it from the perspective of keeping everybody on the ship happy and what they need and support them, just like a coach, you wanna motivate your team, you wanna be able to support your team, they wanna see that you take up for them. That's a really a high good technique that you can use to improve morale, right? They wanna know that you got their back. You just can't say it, you gotta do it. And you just can't do it. You need to do it in a very consistent, ongoing way. All right, let's move to my next phase here, which is wisdom point. My wisdom point is when we are open to change, we grow, especially in the workplace, that innovation and motivation is key. So what I'm trying to say here in this perspective is that change allow us to grow and communicate in a way that is encouraging and change shows the thought process to bring about a new way of doing things. So in my example earlier, I talked about the vendor client type thing and their processes. If you look at a, a piece of a puzzle and one piece to the left is shaped a certain way and the other piece of the puzzle is shaped a different way. When you put it together, it's supposed to you know, connect together and it's a smooth surface. But if the piece to the right that's the vendor client is for some reason, they didn't really get all their shapes it really um, shaped perfectly. It's kind of off. That could be relating to the employees. Maybe they didn't really do the hiring right, so the employees are, didn't get trained as well. So your employees is trying to communicate to them so, that you, so you can maybe get what you need, so you can be able to go forward and produce your product or service for your customers. So the change is not just accepting that flow, but being proactive and either if you know that this particular vendor client is your bottom line, to come up with a way that either in-house most of it, or look at a way that it can be a communication type opportunity with the owner of that vendor or client that to say, this is not really working out. We need to find a way, a common ground, all right? So why is this so? Well, employees get frustrated and bored. They get bored not because it's not so many calls coming in or, or so many clients are coming into the office. They get bored because they're tired of the roadblocks dealing with the process of trying to make it work either with a vendor client or just producing that service or what have you, right? And it's the same issue, okay? And with that, it doesn't motivate the employees or management to be able to really sell the service or the product to the customer because you're going through all, it's like mud, all right. So what I'm outlining here is that when you went to know a change is needed in a workplace is when those things earlier where the employee is just not interested. You have to go more means. That's when you know you need to do a change. Where is that change? You got to identify the roadblocks. Right. So who who are we talking about? Well, when to know it's time for change. When the response is little, a bit dry, lackluster, you can't get anybody to be motivated to even take a survey. Um or the change is happening too often. That's another big indicator. You have to measure how much uh, time is put into whatever you're trying to roll out and how many times that you're changing it. It's either one or two things. Either the initial research wasn't in depth enough or it wasn't long enough to be able to get the data you need to understand it. Number two, people in the workplace also get used to what works and don't understand why the change is necessary. So this is definitely communication. Maybe some people doesn't have all the issues um, correlated to my example of the vendor or the client and they don't understand if it's working for me, why you got to do that. That's where that puzzle example that I went to, where you have the left side, it has his particular shape and then you have the right side, it has that particular shape. You put it together, it's supposed to be smooth, but at some time, over time, it can get wear down and so you have to make an adjustment maybe not the whole piece but some of it and that's where some people that's been doing their processes or their work or what have you feel that hey I don't really need to change what's that so that's where the communication has to go through each measure of each department to communicate this will help your counterpart your colleague number three the overall root of it often deals with the last change or agenda isn't working to the metrics set forth so a change is imperative so you're looking at your metrics report and it's just not moving um, let's say that you have a season is here where you get a lot of customers or what have you and you need employees to do overtime and they're not here and they're not interested that means that the processes as i mentioned earlier last month or better yet just the organization in itself 
or the customer have the higher expectation because doing the selling part, they get the client or the customer. A lot of things have been promised when the system can't match and sustain that and the employees have not. Another example is the training, which I'm definitely want to do a podcast about that because the lack of training for the last decade that most companies are saying, this is the way to go, we can save money. But actually you create frustration. You create low morale. You could do a survey. How many people want to go to a job and they're not fully trained to know what the world they need to do? Or the change of the software has changed in the last six or five months, right? Maybe less. Okay. Or there's a high turnover and you're constantly retraining or constantly have someone else making errors because they didn't get trained. It's like a vicious cycle. So I definitely going to think about doing another podcast about the importance of investing in proper training. Proper training, just to kind of step to the side before I move on to my next part of strategy to succeed. Proper training is important and it goes along with human resources. Human resources, you can get the the standard definition, but to me, is managing the resources that are motivating, encouraging, informing, informing a slice of training uh, in a way that employees will stay until retirement. When you have that type of workforce, it goes along with training. Otherwise, it's just a revolving door, which costs more money, more stress, more frustration. And then you say, well, you know, we can give you more money. Let's, you can do some overtime. You know, they don't want to do it. You have to have forced mandatory overtime. When that's on the table, we have a problem and change is required. All right. Strategy to succeed. Let's move on to that. So learning when to change things up that deals with understanding your industry trends for either a workplace technology to departments and organization that creates a great synergy. That's what you basically want. And the next one is using a procedural way to gather that data into a professional rollout of change, assist in the acceptance. Acceptance is basically, I'm saying, is communication. What is the communication blueprint? I worked for a company years ago. It's before I wrote my Corporate America book, Surviving Your Journey to a Success. By the way, you can get that on Amazon. If you like my book, please leave a review. Hopefully you'll give me a high star. <laughs> All right. But nonetheless, and they was rolling out something major. They was, they was um, rearranging uh, the offices. And they had over like thousands of employees. So it was a big Fortune 500 company. But nonetheless, and they did all that. But what I liked was, is that it was gearing all up for this major town hall. And the person that spoke, oh my goodness. He was like speaking a beautiful speech, but he took the time. He addressed our concerns of uh, uncertainty. He, in his speech, he he had visual, but mostly he was just talking to us. And he broke it down in different phases of what we would eventually would see and experience and how it, the transition will out. Basically, they don't want you to leave because they still need you, but they took the time. They also had like, a, like not like a festival, you would say, but they kind of, uh, for the next week, they had different um, programs that you would work and then you would stop it and you would go to some type of activity to talk about this big change that the company was implementing that will impact and that's just the customers, but the employees and it would gear it towards moving forward in the next year that will help in all areas. And we also they had a big cookout, they had food, they had different things. It just kind of made it in a fun, interesting way to basically accept that was the communication model, right? It wasn't just, this is what we're going to do, da, da, da. This is the date, deal with it. It was taking in consideration our emotions of attached to the norm to now it's going to be a different type. Uh, work processes and systems and where you'll be working for or where I should say. All right, so the other part here I want to say my strategy to succeed is the most important strategy is to create your report card journal to document the last change to when you decided to change again and make sure it is not every 90 days or less than 180 days. So instead of a year minimum, I would suggest, you know, two years or three years more better out forward remember your employees are doing the same task day in and day out and get in the mood to how things work so any drastic change changes can hinder their motivation to even want to stay longer to learn more and that can impact your turnover which is very important you want to get a low turnover rate if you got a high turnover rate you're doing something wrong so my next part here is where i get to your task to dust to down before i wrap up this podcast episode today and that's basically i want you to monitor the last change to decide if it is working for you in the organization i need you to study the industry trends and upgrade in any appropriate ways that's 
knowing that you need to make a change, right? And then just got to create a project to roll that out. I need to, to implement the dates far in advance so change is not sudden or rushed to, to deter a message that you do not care about the mindset of the employee or the customer or client so you can have that calming effect that's required when change is needed. So when you do a rapid change and just roll it out and say, oh, deal with it, it really backfires on you. So rushing to only to change it again doesn't really get you to where you need to be. So management has to remember the job that the employees do is a part of their life, not their whole life existence. That's why it comes into my point. If you have offered overtime and you have to move to mandatory overtime and you have to, that means basically you're not influencing your workforce and it's to the point that is so stressful. They don't even want the money. So therefore your link and the power that you have of influence has lessened. That's very serious. So you have to start looking at what are the things or the decisions that was made to lead to the mindset that even with money, it goes back to my theme. Mental peace is gold. Everybody wants it. And when it is denied and restricted, or just thinking of doing something or being somewhere that cause that cause so much stress and confusion and tired and, and you constantly got to do more stuff than you need on an outdated software and the customers or whatever are rude or what have you and no one is reeling them in saying, look, we respect you, you respect us. You know, it's just about getting the money, making the profit and usually on the front line or the second line or the third line and that's it. It doesn't last. All right. So your motivation takeaway is that when we accept change, we accept progress forward. All right, that wraps up my podcast today. Thank you so much for joining me. Please visit my website, NichelleAnderson.com. Go ahead and sign up to my newsletter. You can do that. You will see a message there on my website. You can just key in your email and then you'll be part of my email list. You do can get some discounts and heads up notice when I do my webinars and any type of courses or classes that I'm rolling out. Thank you so much for your support. I do have merchandise on my site, NichelleAnderson.com. You can get some motivational t-shirts, I have some mugs, some journals as well. Really support my mission to help to motivate you and others in the workplace or not, your personal relationship. So you can get your mental peace and a joyfulness and moving forward. All right. Thank you so much.